Hi, you folks. How you doing? I want to make you guys this video. This is a pretty important video. And, um, you know, I'm making this video for you because you folks, are, you folks have been so good lately. So, I'm going to go ahead and make you guys a video. One you deserve. Okay, here it is. Now, this one's entitled, um, Wilhelm Reich and the Nazis. We'll just keep it at that title, but we're going to... We'll cover some good stuff. You're going to love this. So, um, now who was Wilhelm Reich? Wilhelm Reich was a psychiatrist. Well, he was a scientist. And uh, in Europe at the time, many psychiatrists, psych psych psychologists, psychiatrists were also scientists. Like, for instance, uh, Manuel Velikovsky was a psychoanalyst, psych psychiatrist, psychologist. But he also was a scientist. And... Um, He's considered by lots of scientists to be the greatest scientist that ever lived. But he was primarily a psychologist, a, psych a psychiatrist. And so was uh, uh, Wilhelm Reich. That's how Wilhelm Reich started out his career. Um, he was a contemporary with all those guys, contemporary, you know, with uh, Freud and, and Jung and, you know, Piaget and uh, uh, Pavlov and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And... Freud is the founder of psychoanalysis. So supposedly, you can cure people by, you know, uh, finding out what their most innate desires are that they suppress and, and then have them talk about it and give them some drugs and, you know, have them do a bunch of dumb shit. And um, Freud was a piece of shit. Uh, he couldn't cure anybody. He never cured, he never cured a fucking soul. You hear a lot of really good stuff about him. You'll hear a lot of, of even really, really good, credible people in the psychiatry field and other in other fields, you know, talk a lot of good stuff about Freud. But Freud was a piece of shit. Okay, period. Just just, a, just adult. He was uh, uh, he was he was actually um, he's just afraid of Jung because Jung was smarter, you know. And so he used to try to oppress Carl Jung so that he could he could learn some of the stuff that Jung had learned. And just and come on and you know continue to be the preeminent you know psychological force you know um, in the world. Throw the douche back. And um, um, Carl Jung was more the real thing. Um, he realized that he even said it. You know that he he could not cure any of his European patients, and for a good reason. Um, Jung said that he could not cure any of his European patients, and the reason why was because in his European patients, on the inside, they were angry, fragmented, and perverted on the inside, and he just simply couldn't cure them. So, he was able eventually to cure them, and the way he did it was, is he went to the southwest United States, and he learned from the Nahuatl Indians, those are um, Pueblos, uh, Anasazi, uh, uh, Toltecs, uh, um, Mayans, uh, Nahuatl speaking Indian. He learned from them. And then he went all the way over to Kenya in Africa. And they taught him the exact same thing about how to cure people of psychological illnesses. And those psychological illnesses basically started lightweight in neurosis, just neurotic behavior, you know, neurosis, you know. That's not, you know, it's just, that's mild, that's mild psycho, that's a mild uh, psychological illness. It's a mild mental illness, neurosis, you know. Everybody's got some kind of neurosis, you know what I mean? Uh, it's no big deal. Um, you know, you heard people, they're neurotic, you know, that's just whatever. Um, then, uh, you know, but, but, but of course, neurosis leads to, psych leads to psychosis, which is, which can be dangerous, and then, Psychosis leads to pathological behavior, which is certainly dangerous because, um, you know, path pathological behavior in a criminal sense uh, and in that normal sense, you know, becomes, uh, you know, serial killing and mass murder. So, Sigmund Freud thought that about 50% of all neurosis, the beginning of mental illness, was tied to sexual repression, sexual repression and dysfunction. And he thought ultimately that what lied at the core, at the root of all people's psychological neurosis was that they basically um, wanted to sleep with their parents. 
basically Freud in the fucking nutshell. Yeah. You can go through all the other bullshit you want. You can read all those goddamn books. Go to all the seminars and all the crap you want to in a nutshell. That's Sigmund Freud. And Carl Jung said, yeah, well, you know, there's something to that. But probably about 75% of all neurosis is tied to sexual repression and dysfunction. So, it's, you know, there are stages of mental illness that can lead to, uh, you know, uh, psychosis. So, and uh, pathological behavior, you know, serial killing and mass murder. Um, Wilhelm Wright uh, was certainly smarter than Freud and Jung put together. And Wilhelm Wright was, uh, I'll real quickly preface it before I can, we can get into it, is that he was, uh, he was um, charged as a quack later on in his life, and he died in prison um, from some, uh, med some medical issues. Um, but he was put in jail because uh, he was considered a quack. Okay, so anyway. So Wilhelm Wright had, a, had an IQ of about 202. Um, it was one of the highest IQs ever recorded. Um, you know, you've heard of Niels Bohr, you know, uh, that's, that's a real big one, big mathematician, big German mathematician you've heard of, you know, Niels Bohr, you know, Niels Bohr was a joke compared to Wilhelm Wright, nothing, nothing compared to Wilhelm Wright. Most people were nothing compared to Wilhelm Wright. Yeah. Wilhelm Wright said that 100% of all neurosis comes from sexual depression and dysfunction. It's an orgasm that you want, that you need to have, that you're not having. And you need to have it because you need to release this energy that uh, builds up inside of you. And that energy is termed organ. So organic, um, so according to Wright and his organ research, uh, organic um, Anything organic has a positive emission. Anything inorganic has a negative emission. Okay. So, so they, they both have an and they both they both have an organic emission, but one's negative and one's positive. So we live on we live on an organic sphere. Okay. So uh, 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 Wilhelm Wright got some bad press because uh, he was known to have slept with. Um, one or two of his patients or whatever. That was so fucking common back then in uh, 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 the new, you know, burgeoning psychoanalysis field. Um, you know, it was kind of like when, when those guys got out of school, they got their doctorates, you know, uh, their MDs, you know, they, they would go into psychiatry first. You know, they were scientists, but they were all, they both of them were just going to psychiatry first because there was a platform for success through the field of psychiatry. So, um, for you know progression and later in life that was one of the paths so they a lot of them would take that path and it was quite common quite common for a psychiatrist psychoanalysis psych psychology doctor to sleep with one of his patients Carl Jung was notorious for this shit there's even a a, 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 a movie uh, starring the Academy Award winning actress um, Keira Knightley entitled a dangerous method where Carl Jung slept with this patient for over a year straight um, she had a rape fetish and uh, um, she couldn't she couldn't you know get it out of her system and um, and Carl Jung figured it out and then he raped her for a year and he cured her so you can watch the movie that's, that's some legitimately historical documented shit so you know, the Marquis de Sade, you know, gets a psychiatry degree or whatever, you know, but, um, so Wilhelm Reich said that, that it was 100% of all neurosis was tied to a sexual, sexual repression and dysfunction. Now, Carl Jung, when he went to Africa and he went to Southwest United States, they taught him how to cure European patients by learning about, um, something called fetishes. And fetishes are... Uh, imbalances, uh, if you could call them a demonic possession, but fetishes are an imbalance that uh, that causes us to act in beyond neurotic ways. It'll, 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 they'll cause neurosis, they'll cause psychosis, and they'll definitely cause pathological behavior. Um, 
and the, the, the Indians, as well as the Africans, told him that uh, they know that these forces exist and these forces are invisible. You can't see them with the naked eye. But they are predatory forces and that they will assail us and that we will become uh, imbalanced through these forces that are, that are attacking us that we can't see um, uh, unless we can experience those forces in a certain way and transmute the effect of the forces um, in a creative way. So they said that the way that they had done it was through the mass rituals and the dance. And so the mass represented the fetish. So that's why most of the time you see it'll be a, you know, a, a demon or uh, you know, an owl or uh, a wolf or you know, whatever. You know, it's some kind of fetish that you have. Um, I said, like, it's, uh, fetish is an abnormal attraction, typically, typically, but not exclusively, uh, defined as sexual. Okay. Um, so they taught him that these fetishes could be could be transmitted if they could be experienced in a dance ritual that would transmute the effects of them. So you get to experience it, then you transmute it in a, in a creative way. Uh, with love, and then you don't have to act them out. You don't have to act the negative things out. For real, you can act them out in a creative way. So, you get to experience it, and then, you know, you know, can get an understanding of it, and then that's how you learn, you know, how not to do it. Okay, and that's what the Hindus would call that dharma. That's a, that's a, a, a mental understanding of what karma is, and then you simply don't do the shit. You do something else. Something creative. And um, Jung learned from, the, from uh, these groups that the way to tell what, how you were imbalanced is that your dreams will always reveal to you your imbalance. And Jung said that we are all, most of us, are, either, are imbalanced in either what he called animus possession or anima possession. So that's that's an out of balance. So animus is the male aspects of our of our personality, of our entire being. The male aspect of it is out of balance. Animus is that the female aspect of our personality is out of balance. We're out of we're, we're out of we're out of touch with it. So a woman can be out of touch with her male side. A, a, a man can be out of touch with his woman side. A man can be out of touch with his man side. A woman can be out of touch with her woman side. It could be it could be complete. Imbalance, okay. So that's, that's imbalance. That's the, um, and then they they taught that uh, in the dreams, the dreams are uh, always showing you what the imbalances are, and they use what's called shadow. These shadows, the dreams produce shadows. So the participants in the dream are the shadow components of the dream. Okay. So. Uh, so um, you have to know what the symbols mean. And the symbols are attached to what's called archetypes. Archetypes are basic psychological impressions that humans have gathered over thousands and thousands of years. Thousands and millions of years of being around or whatever. Okay, so the archetypes um, are uh, uh, generally repressed um, over time. Um, well, not all of them, but there's a lot of archetypes that are repressed over time that exist in the collective memory banks of mankind, of humankind, and that's called the collective unconscious. Carl Jung called the collective unconscious the devil. That's where the devil is. And because that's what's been suppressed and um, has not been experienced um, and then transmuted in a positive way. So we just suppress that. We just say, oh, it's dirty, oh, it's nasty, oh, it's the devil, you know. And, um, and so uh, they taught uh, Carl Jung um, how to do these particular therapies in such a way that, uh, oh, and also he taught, they taught him about synchronicities. And that's, uh, that's when, when, when an event occurs. So, so say you're sitting there and you're thinking about having a, a cup of coffee and you get up, get in your car, driving to town, you go to uh, Walmart and you get some memory sticks and you walk up to the counter, there's a cup of coffee sitting right there at the girl's drink. That's a synchronicity. I mean, it's an example of a synchronicity. Um, 
Vibrant. Paris with her, my girl, her, um, her grandmother's name is Marjorie. On her father's side. She comes from, okay, that's on her mother's side, but on her father's side, she comes from Celtic royalty. And the progenitor of that bloodline that she comes from was named Marjorie, but that's on, that's on her father's side. So that's a synchronicity. See? They're not really connected, but that's just way too much of a synchronicity. That's way too much of a coincidence. It, it has to have some metaphysical reason. See? So, um, I want you to investigate it. Um, so, well, Wright said that all neurosis was tied to sexual oppression and dysfunction. And he also developed a method to help humans fix their energy field. And that was called uh, an organ accumulator. So that is a device that you sit inside of. It's a box that, that, you, that you make to certain dimensions. And the, the mathematical dimensions of the box create what's called organ. And uh, an organ is the positive energy force that, uh, that, that dissipates off of us over time. So we need to rebuild that up. So he developed this thing called the organ accumulator. And it got a rave reviews from the citizenry, from people. It got a rave reviews. Um, but, uh, you know, like the way that, the way the system works, if nobody pays attention to you, they don't give a fuck. But people started paying attention to it and it actually worked. And a healthy, uh, deductive, uh, educated, uh, in balanced society is not what the mind controllers want, not what the Nazis, not what... It's not what, uh, the, what, what, especially what the corporations don't want. Corporations do not want a balanced, thinking, well-informed, rational society. They want a fragmented, angry, irrational, jingoistic, um, consumer society. Because that's what benefits them. So, you, you, you know, you're, where they're, uh, where they're, um, energy source, with their battery. And so Wilhelm Reich ex basically, with the organ accumulator, was curing people and people were, were really, really coming out on the other side of it. Because you take the combination in Germany and Austria and areas like that, you take the combination of Waldorf education, so that's Rudolf Steiner's education method, in tandem with, Rudolf, with Wilhelm Reich creating an organ accumulator which fixes people's energy fields. You're going to wind up with a, uh, with a rational, well-thinking, well-informed society. Much like you have in Germany today. Germany's the number one society on the planet. They have a female chancellor for 20 years. They're the number one economy on the earth. They have 20-hour work, work weeks. They work four days a week, and they get six weeks off a year, no matter what. So, see, between Steiner and, and Reich, it actually worked. See. So, um, so Reich was so smart until uh, his organ research was of a major interest to lots of entities on this planet, including the U.S. government, the military, the military-industrial complex, as well as the CIA, the secret government, and... Um, uh, black Ops, um, a high-tech weaponry program, okay, Oregon, this, you know, so you're saying you can use this shit, you can use this shit as a particle beam, you can use this shit as a, uh, as a, a scalar pulse weapon, you can use this shit as a, uh, 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 you know, a, uh, a, a quantum laser system, you know, um, you know, stuff like that, and you could, and so, um, so Wright wound up getting a contract with uh, the U.S. Air Force, and um, he, uh, in the meantime, back in Germany, his books were selling good, his books were selling good here in America, 
uh, people were getting into the Oregon research. Uh, they were they were getting into these organic accumulators. They were getting into these different stones and rocks and stuff that produced organ and 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 just you know organ main, you know. And so uh, just to backtrack a little bit, because that's one of the things in late Weimar Republic, not Nazi Germany, before Nazis took power. Um, what what. Uh, the way the Nazis were actually able really to take power, and people don't know this, is just two things. One is they started an, and they started an incredible pest campaign, an ad campaign for a, a, a for a clean Germany, and um, so they started this incredible, you know, like uh, you know, Orkin, um, uh, you know, um, uh, pest control. Uh, this is gigantic pest control movement. Then they expertly um, associated the Jews to the pest. And the way they did that was uh, uh, they used the example of the Jewish artist. And they got a bunch of psychiatrists to say that the Jewish art was deranged. And then they took the art into the intelligentsia. And they had all these seminars and all these, um, uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 meetings and, and think tanks and blah 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 blah. You know, to psychologically analyze the art of the Jews. And they and they associated. They were able to do that. They were able to through through that eventually. They were able to associate pests to the Jews that need to be exterminated. That's the architect. That's what they did. And the second thing, the way they were able to uh, come to power was, is that, see, people don't notice, the Nazis were all gay. The Nazis started out as uh, the gay rights movement. <laughs> they did. Uh, and then it became the human rights movement. Then it became civil rights. See, you never knew what they came from. And then when they got into power, they persecuted the gay people. They were gay. But they persecuted all the people that were gay in Nazi Germany. And the thing about the late Weimar Republic was is it was such a liberal place. It was so liberal. But so, so they blamed the fact that the Nazis came about uh, because of uh, the liberals. You know, it was the liberals. It was the liberals, you know. Um, it's not actually, it's not actually true. What it is is this: it's just that living in the late Weimar Republic, Nazi Germany, was similar to living like in a in a in a in a gay New Age bookstore. And the scope of argument that was rational, that fell within lines that were pretty much established as rational, rational, reasonable lines of argument, which should which should be pretty wide, which should be liberal. Um. Uh. You know, is established through um, a, a press that has a liberal bent. Okay, so um, but if you take that away, or if you overdo it, which is what they did, so they took the liberal spectrum and just made it way the fuck over here. They made the liberal spectrum so ridiculously. It was just like living on Mars in a gay New Age bookstore. It was just ridiculous. See, so it wasn't really, you can't really blame the liberals. It was the way that what was going on was manipulated. You can label it all you want, but that's what was going on. That's how it was manipulated. And then, so the Nazis came to power by just simply taking the slogans, love for everyone. Everyone should love each other. Let's, let's come together, brother. Let's, you know, you know, any of that gay shit. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just telling you how to happen. Yeah. And they would use that, they would use those motivations as the rule. So if you if you didn't grow up gay, like it's like in America now. If you didn't grow up gay, if growing up 
in your neighborhood when you were young, you were not around homosexual people or gay people. And all of a sudden, you're thrust into a society that is basically run by um, uh, uh, cloak and dagger gay mafia. And then everything you watch on television is those values. And then when you go somewhere and you say something that you're used to saying, all of a sudden you get canceled because of, just because of the way you think. See the problem here? That's exactly what the Nazis did. That's exactly what they did. They took the motivations. So if you if you're against gay people, then you know you're fucked up. If you're you know I mean even if you make an observation, you don't have to be against them. You just make an observation of, uh, concerning them, just a, a thought, and you write it down, put it in an article, or you talk about it out. You could get in trouble. Much like they'd like to have it here in America today. They'd like to be able to use the gay rights movement as a force that becomes totalitarian. Something that you just simply cannot ever, you can't make an observation about it. You can't speak out against it or, or you can't speak out about it. Just shut up. And we see that as evidence is that when, you know, when today, when children go to, uh, you know, when, when a 13 year old child, you know, goes to the, to the school doctor and says, you know, okay, I'm, I'm a boy, but I feel like a girl. That school doctor is not allowed to ask it a question. Not allowed, not allowed to ask that child a question. That school doctor is not allowed to to pose any scenario that you might want to analyze what you're feeling. They're not allowed to do that. All they're allowed to do is make the appointment with the external doctor so that, that child can go to get can go to begin their gender reassignment. Um, uh, process. No psychological analysis. No question and answer sessions. No, no soul searching. No nothing. Just a pop culture activity of a 13 year old who's seen other people do it. It's on television. They're, they're watching it and they're talking about it. It must be cool. And they go and get their entire gender change. Under the auspices that uh, oh, it's the there's a uh, there, you know, it's the, what's being born now in the world is the two-spirit person, and that person is a, also, is a man and a woman on the inside, and they can choose whichever one they want to be. You can do whatever you want. But, it's a quite negative thing. Um, especially, not, not on a small scale. It's a quite negative thing on the scale that it's on, because there's not that many people at all who are uh, uh, the other gender living inside the wrong body. Um, it used to be back in America back in the day uh, before you know we got this bullshit now. Um, the, only, the, only, the only hospital that really did gender reassignment surgery in the United States was John Hopkins. And they had all the research. Legitimate good research. And they would not let a, a person um, do gender reassignment until they had done about six, seven, eight months of psychological analysis on these people and, and uh, had fully prepared them for what was going to take place, what all the transition you know, problems were going to be. They were fully educated in. And then once they were convinced that that person was, you know, then they would do it. But if a hundred people came to them for that, they might do five of them. So, because the rest of it was just psychological problems. So people take their psychological problems and they repress them. They don't deal with them. And instead they, instead, instead they become something else which creates more psychological problems. So, um, uh, Wilhelm Reich's organ research, organ is, 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 is the manipulation of the polarity of organic and inorganic objects. He got a job with the U.S. Air Force and moved up to Maine. He said that he could create rain. And by then, the U.S. Air Force believed him because he had demonstrated he could do it. And he got a, a huge contract, moved up to Maine, and, and, con, and started to conduct organic research with what was called a cloud buster. So he could literally use this thing called a cloud buster and produce rain. He could literally produce rain on demand. You want some rain? Here you go. 
But one of the interesting things about this was when he would produce the rain, all these unidentified glowing flying objects would appear out of the clouds that he had created. They were unblue. And they, they, they glowed. They, were, they, they definitely were saucer shaped. They were round. Um, uh, and, um, you yeah. know. So, anyway. Um, so, as time went on, uh, now the Nazis, you know, were very interested in Wilhelm Reich's uh, uh, um, uh, organ research. And the way you know this is because when, when Wilhelm Reich eventually died in jail, when he was put in jail, um, the group that campaigned against him the most was a group, was a Nazi group from Germany that campaigned against him in America as a quack. It was a group from Germany. Now, why would they do that? Because the Nazis have agreed. They don't give a fuck if you think that, they're, that they run the war or not. They don't care what you think. The Nazis came up with the, with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, the format of ruling the world through secrecy. Uh, they don't care if you know or not. They don't have to be up in front of you and telling you, I'm, you know, they run the world. So, um, even World War II, they didn't lose World War II. If they had lost World War II, we wouldn't have got all their scientists over here into our um, science fields and our mental health fields. We got all of them in a thing called Project Paperclip. So if they lost, why did all their intelligentsia come come to us and were installed in the highest areas of our intelligence. If, if they lost, then why... Okay, so if everybody thinks that the state of Israel was created through the Balfour Declaration in 1948, written by Lord Balfour, which established the state of Israel, but if that's the case, then why is the state of Israel used today to oppress the Palestinians in the, two, in, in, in the, in the open-air, uh, two-mile-square prison of, of the Gaza Strip? Why does our government give the Israelis our top military technology to test out on the Palestinians even before we test it out? That's not the shit. So, um, uh, why did, why during the Holocaust did 95% uh, of the Jews, 95% of the Jews that wound up in, in Israel during the Holocaust were German Jews. Wait a minute, so the Jews are being killed in Germany, but all of a sudden another group of Jews are winding up in, in, in Jerusalem? That means the group of Jews that wound up in Jerusalem are the ones that are killing the other Jews. See? So, um, Wilhelm Reich, uh, the Nazis were really interested in his organ research. In, even in tandem with his psychological findings, because he, you know, he 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 wrote a book himself called Propaganda, which um, which you know which Joseph Goebbels you know ain't gonna never admit that he used really to 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 to, to, to get his propaganda off, uh, but that's what he did. Uh, you know, a lot of it was Wilhelm Reich. So now the way you know Wilhelm Reich was smarter than everybody else was because um, um, now if you take these the the, the two most Top scientific projects on the planet in the last 30 years have been what? The HARP, that's the High Altitude Auroral Resonance Program. That's a, a weather pattern program and, and, a, and a program to, that can, uh, that can uh, uh, heat up microwave amplification to simulate an emission of radiation into uh, our um, stratosphere. It can, it, can, it can literally fry the ionosphere as well as manipulate weather patterns. And then the, the uh, CERN, Large Hadron Collider. Both those projects have Wilhelm Reich's name written in the patents about a hundred and something times each. Now, if he was a quack, why did the last two top scientific programs in the world, in the last 20, in the last uh, 50 years, got his names all over the patent? Then what they did. Uh, they wanted to use his organ research to enhance the Nazi saucer technology. Now we know that Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, after the war, went up to went up to Antarctica. Uh, the Nazis had a base up there with saucer craft. Uh, the U.S. military came back. He was an Air Force general, uh, uh, admiral, he was a Navy admiral, 
that US, the U.S. Uh, he, they, they came back and they reported that they could not. They were they had the the top military technology that they had was not capable of quelling the technology the Nazis had in the, the base of there. See, it's William Reich stuff. And also, what they do? Exact same pattern they use today with uh, like see, if you go to a university in Cincinnati, I mean, in, in, in the United States now. Universities have started to teach there's no such thing as mind control, which is ridiculous. Well, they said you know, this guy named Stephen Kinzer, who had wrote a book about Alan Dulles, John Foster Dulles, and the CIA and the National Security Act of 1947, he wrote this really good book about all that shit, exposing how fucked up Alan Dulles and his brother were. So, uh, Alan Dulles was, was the first leader of uh, the first director of the CIA, and John Foster Dulles was. was uh, Secretary of State and um, Eleanor Roosevelt and um, uh, Ethel Kennedy, uh, they both despised fucking John Foster Dulles. Despised. And even his, uh, Harry Truman even said that the worst day in American history was the day he signed the National Security Act in 1947. So, um, so now these people, the Nazis, can now in America operate under the auspices of national security and, and they all work in our secret government. So they just took they just took the country over. The Nazis agreed to rule by secrecy. They don't give a fuck if you know. They don't care. They have no interest whatsoever in promenading in front of you their power. They rule by secrecy. They learned when they went looking for the secrets to how to rule the world, they learned that that the most powerful groups that run the world always just do it in secrecy. Like in India, you got what's called the Rosho Thanoda, you know. Don't want nobody even, even, even talk ab about them negatively, you know, above their, you know, whisper on their breath. It was the same, it's the same way in Persia, uh, the, in the Persian countries with the Roshaniya. Uh, you never heard of it, but premier secret society. Um, uh, in China, it was the Thuggies, uh, which was a, 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 a homosexual assassin cult. Uh, in uh, ancient um, Turkey it was the Hashishim, the assassin of, uh, of Alamut, the old man of the mountain. You've heard of it. Um, so the Nazis followed those rules. Rule by secrecy. Fuck it, one guy do it out in the open. And then when the Nazis finally got out, when it, so when the war was over, the Nazis went down to um, uh, Argentina and Brazil was the first thing to happen when they got down to Argentina and Brazil. It was the first big uh, social boom to, to occur. Everybody started getting sex change operations. It didn't happen until they got down there. So between Wilhelm Reich's information and the Nazi death camps, they figured out how to manipulate people's gender, how to get them to do it on a mass scale. See? He who is least confused has the most power. So if they're the ones manipulating you into gender fluidity, then they're the ones that have the most power because they're least confused about what's going on because it's them pulling the strings. So in America, this group, this Nazi group, this, this German group that was against Wilhelm Reich, um, they got him put in jail for uh, uh, this organ accumulator was, was quackery. And they got Albert Einstein to do a test on the organ accumulator. Or uh, uh, Albert Einstein came back and said it didn't work. Wilhelm Reich was like, well, give me all your, your test stuff. He looked at it. He's like, he did it wrong. So he, he corrected Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein did a test again, and it worked. And he had to announce it, but uh, uh, the public damage was already done. Wilhelm Reich was in jail. And Albert Einstein's, people don't know this, but Albert Einstein's secretary was a card-carrying member of the Communist Party. Another thing people don't know is Marie Montessori was a card-carrying member of the Communist Party. I'm talking about global fascists, global communists, you know, global white supremacists. Albert Einstein's secretary was one, and so was Marie Montessori. So, um, uh, so Al Ron, so Wilhelm Reich winds up being in jail 
and um, he winds up getting sick and he dies. And um, but then uh, you know you have all these products on the internet nowadays you know, that are all based upon his research. You know all these energy products. You know organ accumulators, organ stuff, all this organ stuff. You know on, on the internet. And, and another thing that so the way that the, the Nazi system works is they use Hollywood also to mind control people. And they keep people scared and afraid of a person like Wilhelm Wright. And they keep, that also deters anyone from being like Wilhelm Wright. Because people like Wilhelm Wright can shut, that, can shut, can shut the mind control, global mind control system down overnight. That's how smart they are. So they don't want that. So they, so they discuss so what they do. They come up with these movies which are archetypes of Wilhelm Wright, like for instance. Uh, they come up with this movie called uh, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, so Hannibal Lecter, is, you know, you know, remember how smart he is? He's so smart, he's so much smarter than everybody else, but he's sinister. And he's got to be muffled and straight jacketed. And, and he's telling you a story about Wilhelm, right? Because why? What is, what is, what is Dr. Lecter's focus on? He focuses on gender reassignment patients. Jane Gunn, his, his uh, Buffalo Bill, was one of his patients. He, uh, uh, he's got that butterfly out there for transformation. See? Uh, the, uh, uh, the monarch. Transformation. See? So you've got, uh, that's Oregon. Wilhelm Wright. Transformation. Oregon energy. See? And uh, so that's, um, uh, that's what Hannibal Lecter is all about. And then, you know, then, then when, they, when, when a person like a Jeffrey Dahmer comes along or something like that, the way the matrix, the system works, it can reinforce that taboo uh, against being similar to Wilhelm Wright because you just you just promote the fuck out the Jeffrey Dahmer. He was smart. He was able to go undetected. He's he he was eating people and you know and he was watching demonic movies and you know stuff like that. See, that's just basically why they pick Jeffrey Dahmer out of one motherfucker. that's all out people out there doing shit worse than him. Because he fits the mold of the archetype that they want to support and keep keep in your mind, so you don't so you don't dissent against that particular uh, uh, setup, and that that is in, that the a non dissenting against elite power and concentration program is embedded in everything you watch on television. That that program is called the Mohawk Valley formula, and it was develop it was developed by the corporations um, in America um, during the 1920s. Um, to just to, to curb dissent against anyone not following um, labor serves concentrated private power. So labor serves concentrated power, 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 and you don't ask any questions about the flow of state capital. The the the, 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 the capitalists get it all, and you don't get anything. That's the definition of communism, because that's the definition of white supremacy. Because White supremacy can only exist by and through the flow of state capital. And America was founded as a Nazi system um, uh, because back when it was founded, uh, it was the flow of state capital went completely to one demographic, one group, and uh, that was the white male. Matter of fact, you couldn't even get elected to Congress or, or uh, uh, um, the Senate. You were just appointed by a white male. Thereby ensuring that the white male value system, white male value, corporate value system, would always be preeminent in America, and that's exactly the way the Constitution was worded. It's exactly the way the Constitutional Convention went down. That's exactly the way uh, the, the the founders were concerned about was uh, um, that at some point people would, would start to participate in the political process. So we have to find ways to distract them, so, and. Um, and they've been doing that ever since they founded America. Finding ways to keep the public at large marginalized, especially the non-whites, and to mainly get keep power in the hands of the white male, the white closet homosexual male that um, that uh, institutes the 